Hello. Today we are here to present Simio Tsudum V uh, 2020 Problem B, Kakatu on a Wheel. Uh, my name is Edward Duo. I'm Eric Chen. And I'm David Wong. So let's talk about the problem we were presented with. We were given a video of a Kakatu personal wheel moving in such a way to make the wheel spin. And the task was to make a model of this phenomenon, identify the equations and trajectory of the bird's motion, and to identify the starting conditions and the maximum speed of the wheel. Let's look at our model. So we modeled the bird as a mass M here, uh, capable of moving tangentially and radially within a certain range of D0. Uh, we demarcated the position of the wheel uh, as phi, uh, with counterclockwise being positive for phi and phi dot. Uh, and our goal was to find the most optimal functions, D tangential as a function of phi and D radial as a function of phi, that would maximize the angular momentum. Our other, uh, other constants in include the r, which is the radius of the wheel, and also beta, which is the coefficient for the uh, moment of inertia, as well as big M, which is the mass of the big wheel. And finally, we have b, which is the coefficient for the damping force, uh, which is proportional to b times the angular, moment, uh, angular velocity. So for uh, our model, we can for each of the components of the burst motion, like we can divide uh, up the trajectory. I mean, for all categories of motion into either alternating, alternating partial rotations, which is this, or full rotations. We do this because there are slightly different proofs for each of them for to find the optimal trajectory. We can then write the equations of motion for each of these systems, which are given by these two equations. The upper one would be the radial equation, and the bottom one would be the tangential equation. These equations of motions are based on the differential relationship between torque and angular momentum, where on the right side would be the net torque on the wheel, and on the left side is the, uh, the change of angular momentum over time. And now we can, first we can observe uh, the effects of radial movement for alternating, uh, alternating, rotating uh, the wheels. So through a mathematical proof uh, that's based on the equations of motion, we can prove that for falling intervals, the mass will always be as far as the wheel, as far as from the center of the wheel as possible, and on rising intervals, it will be as close as possible. And this is represented by the graph on the right. And similarly, for full rotations. Through a similar but different proof, we can prove that the same applies for full rotations. And this makes sense because on falling intervals, it's trying to maximize the angle of velocity at the bottom of the wheel, while instantaneous movements upwards will cause the maximum uh, increase of angle of velocity. And on rising intervals, it's trying to get as high as possible, which means for it to minimize the moment of inertia by sticking to the wheel. So, after we've uh, designed this proof for the tr uh, optimal trajectory, we define our constants to be used in the numerical approach to find the model that, uh, of the bird's motion. And so we've defined the small mass of the bird as 0 0.5 kilograms, the big mass as 1.2 kilograms, the beta, which is the coefficient before the moment of inertia to be 0 0.9 since most of the mass is concentrated on the wheel, uh, on the outside, and 0 0.4 for the uh, 0 0.4 meters for the R because that's a, a usual value for a bike wheel. Uh, we have d0 equals 0 0.15, and this is how uh, this is the distance at which the bird can uh, move tangentially and radially. And finally, we have the uh, the damping coefficient, which is 0 0.0525 for the radial model, and we found that. This is the close, close to the critical value, meaning values bigger than this will lead the system to, uh, to decrease in amplitude and go to zero. And so these are the graphs that we plotted, and we used a method of uh, looping through the iterations of, uh, of the iterations of motion and plotting the uh, solutions uh, to the differential equations using an ODE solver. Now, you can see that here there's discontinuous jumps in the phi dot, uh, in the phase diagram, because the bird we modeled as moving instantaneously when it gets to 
phi equals zero. Uh, and it increases the speed, and then we have here an increase of speed again, and eventually it will transition to the full rotations, which is indicated by the red lines over here. And the spectrum indicates that the, at the darker red lines, this is where the uh, motion becomes periodic and relatively stable. Now here we have the uh, phi and omega, phi dot, uh, as a function of t. And we found that these are the uh, period and the, uh, the omega max. Let's talk about our tangential results. So first we had to define the model for tangential with the, which direction was positive for d. So we created an apparatus like this uh, with positive and negative ends. And the application of this shows that the positive side is on top on the right side, but on the bottom on the left side. And this will be important in, uh, later on when we look at our motions, uh, motion graphs. So if you look at our motions graphs, you can see that there are red lines pointing back to the left and blue lines pointing to the right. This is because there is an asymmetry due to the flipping of the positive and negative uh, ends uh, vertically that you don't see in the radiograph. And how we can basically interpret these graphs is that the mass of the bird on falling motions is trying to stay as close to the extremes as possible, whereas on rising motions, they're trying to stay as far away from the extremes as possible to minimize the uh, effect of gravity on the way up. And here, we, again, we see the sim similar results with the full rotations, uh, moving away and moving towards the ends based on rising and falling. Yeah, and these results were derived from the equation of motion for tangent directly. And so we use the same exact method of graphing the, uh, the radio graphs to the tangential model. And we also use the same damping coefficient of 0 0.0525, which we found is also close to the critical. Now we find that for the tangential one, there are more turns in which the bird is still in the alternating motion, which means that the tangential, uh, the tangential model is not as efficient as the radio model. And here we have the time and the maximum uh, phi dot and t. And so what we did is we took both of these models and we incorporated it into one hybrid uh, motion to model the, the motion of the bird as it is a combination of radio and tangential. Now, we did this for three sets of graphs. One is for an underdamped coefficient of 0 0.0525. One is for, and this, the, the results are shown here. As you can see, the final velocity is very high. And then we have a close to critical um, damping coefficient of 1.05, which you see has a lot of turns in the alternating uh, section, and then it uh, becomes a relatively stable motion. And then we have an overdamped coefficient of b equals 1.2, in which the motion never reaches a full rotation. And finally, we, to accurately simulate the bird's motion, we combine these into a model where it is just the full rotations. Uh, and we use the value of b uh, equals 1.1 for this one. And we can see that our end results are actually quite realistic as the period, both the period and the uh, phi dot max are pretty close to what we observe in the video. Now I'd like to discuss the limitations of a model. So first, the bird's move motion cannot be instantaneous in real life, so if we introduce a finite time interval, this will only decrease the effectiveness of the pumping on the system. And also, we ignore the frictional drag's dependence, a potential dependence on the normal force, which can cause problems for the radial uh, direction of movement. Another limitation is that we didn't, we weren't able to experimentally find an accurate value of the damping coefficient b, and so we just tried different values to see what the, the effect on the model. So we conclude that the optimal uh, motion of the bird is the superposition of the radial, of, of the radial and tangential optimal motions, and. In the, at the end, with the initial conditions similar to the ones given in the video, we find maximum angular velocities of similar to the uh, realistic situation. Now, for a more rigorous proof of all of our results, as well as a more dis detailed description of our model, uh, please visit the paper that we've attached in the link in the description. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.